Josephine Baker, born Frida Josephine MacDonald, the 3rd of June 1906 to 12 April 1975, was an entertainer, activist, and French resistance agent. Her career was centered primarily in Europe, mostly in her adopted France. During her early career, she was renowned as a dancer and was among the most celebrated performers to headline the reviews of the Folies Bergère in Paris. Her performance in the Revue Unvent de Folie in 1927 caused a sensation in Paris. Her costume consisting of only a girdle of bananas, became her most iconic image and a symbol of the jazz age in the 1920s. She was celebrated by artists and intellectuals of the era, who variously dubbed her the Black Pearl, the Bronze Venus, and the Creole Goddess. Born in St. Louis, Missouri, she renounced her U.S. citizenship and became a French national after her marriage to French industrialist Jean Lyon in 1937. She raised her children in France. I have two loves, the artist once said, my country and Paris. Baker was the first person of color to become a world-famous entertainer and to star in a major motion picture, the 1934 Mark Allegret film Zuzu. Baker refused to perform for segregated audiences in the United States and is noted for her contributions to the civil rights movement. In 1968 she was offered unofficial leadership in the movement in the United States by Coretta Scott King, following Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination. After thinking it over, Baker declined the offer out of concern for the welfare of her children. She was also known for aiding the French resistance during World War II. After the war, she was awarded the Croix de Guerre by the French military, and was named a Chevalier of the Légion d'Honneur by General Charles de Gaulle. Equals equals early life equals equals. Josephine Baker was born as Frida Josephine MacDonald in St. Louis, Missouri. Her mother, Carrie, was adopted in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1886 by Richard and Elvira MacDonald, both of whom were former slaves of African and Native American descent. Josephine Baker's estate identifies vaudeville drummer Eddie Carson as her natural father despite evidence to the contrary. Baker's foster son Jean-Claude Baker wrote a biography on her that was published in 1993 titled Josephine, The Hungry Heart. Jean-Claude Baker did an exhaustive amount of research into the life of Josephine Baker, including the identity of her biological father. In the book, he discusses at length the circumstances surrounding Josephine Baker's birth. The records of the city of St. Louis tell an almost unbelievable story. They show that, Josephine Baker's mother, Carrie McDonald, Dot was admitted to the exclusively white female hospital on May 3, 1906, diagnosed as pregnant. She was discharged on June 17, her baby, Frida J. McDonald having been born two weeks earlier. Why six weeks in the hospital? Especially for a black woman, of that time, who would customarily have had her baby at home with the help of a midwife. Obviously, there had been complications with the pregnancy, but Carrie's chart reveals no details. The father was identified, on the birth certificate, simply as EDW. I think Josephine father was white, so did Josephine, so did her family, people in St. Louis say that, Baker's mother, had worked for a German family, around the time she became pregnant, he's the one who must have got her into that hospital and paid to keep her there all those weeks, also, her baby's birth was registered by the head of the hospital at a time when most black births were not, I have unraveled many mysteries associated with Josephine Baker, but the most painful mystery of her life, the mystery of her father's identity, I could not solve, the secret died with Carrie, who refused to the end to talk about it, she let people think Eddie Carson was the father, and Carson played along, but, Josephine knew better. Carrie McDonald and Eddie Carson had a song and dance act, playing wherever they could get work. When Josephine was about a year old they began to carry her on stage occasionally during their finale. She was further exposed to show business at an early age because her childhood neighborhood was home to many vaudeville theaters that doubled as movie houses. These venues included the Jazzland, Booker T., Washington, and Comet Theaters. Josephine was always poorly dressed and hungry as a child, and developed street smarts playing in the railroad yards of Union Station. She had little formal education, and attended Lincoln Elementary School only through the fifth grade. Josephine's mother married a kind but perpetually unemployed man, Arthur Martin, with whom she had a son, Arthur, and two more daughters, Marguerite and Willie. She took in laundry to wash to make ends meet, and at eight years old, Josephine began working as a live-in domestic for white families in St. Louis. One woman abused her, burning Josephine's hands when the young girl put too much soap in the laundry. At 13, Josephine also worked as a waitress at the Old Chauffeur's Club at 3133 Pine Street. She also lived as a street child in the slums 
of St. Louis, sleeping in cardboard shelters, scavenging for food in garbage cans, making a living with street corner dancing. It was at the old chauffeur's club where Josephine met Willie Wells and married him the same year. However, the marriage lasted less than a year and she left Wells to join a black vaudeville group. In Baker's teen years she struggled to have a healthy relationship with her mother, Carrie McDonald, who did not want Josephine to become an entertainer, and scolded her for not tending to Baker's second husband, Willie Baker, whom she had married in 1921 at age 15. Although she left Willie Baker when her vaudeville troupe was booked into a New York City venue and divorced him in 1925, it was during this time she began to see significant career success, and she continued to use his last name professionally for the rest of her life. Though Baker traveled, then returned with gifts and money for her mother and younger half-sister, the turmoil with her mother pushed her to make a trip to France. Equals equals career equals 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 early years equals equals equals. Baker's street corner dancing attracted attention, leading to her being recruited for the St. Louis Chorus Vaudeville Show at the age of 15. She headed to New York City during the Harlem Renaissance, performing at the Plantation Club and in the chorus of the groundbreaking and hugely successful Broadway reviews Shuffle Along, 1921, with Adelaide Hall and the Chocolate Dandies, 1924. She performed as the last dancer in a chorus line. Traditionally the dancer in this position performed in a comic manner, as if she were unable to remember the dance, until the encore, at which point she would perform it not only correctly but with additional complexity. Baker was billed at the time as the highest paid chorus girl in vaudeville. Baker's career began with her doing blackface comedy at local clubs, this was the entertainment that her mother did not approve of. Blackface performances landed Baker an opportunity to tour in Paris, which would become the place she called home until her final days. Equals 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 Paris and rise to fame equals equals equals. Baker sailed to Paris, for a new venture, and opened in La Revue Negra on 2 October 1925, aged 19, at the Théâtre des champs élysées In Paris, she became an instant success for her erotic dancing, and for appearing practically nude on stage. After a successful tour of Europe, she broke her contract and returned to France to star at the Folies Berger, setting the standard for her future acts. Baker performed the Danse Sauvage wearing a costume consisting of a skirt made of a string of artificial bananas. Her success coincided, 1925, with the Exposition des Arts Décoratifs, which gave birth to the term Art Deco, and also with a renewal of interest in non-Western forms of art, including African. Baker represented one aspect of this fashion. In later shows in Paris, she was often accompanied on stage by her pet cheetah, Chiquita, who was adorned with a diamond collar. The cheetah frequently escaped into the orchestra pit, where it terrorized the musicians, adding another element of excitement to the show. After a while, Baker was the most successful American entertainer working in France. Ernest Hemingway called her the most sensational woman anyone ever saw. Baker starred in three films which found success only in Europe, the silent film Siren of the Tropics, 1927, Zuzu, 1934, and Princess Tam Tam, 1935. She starred in Fosse Alert in 1940. At this time she scored her most successful song, J. Durham 1931. At the start of her career in France, Baker met a Sicilian former stonemason who passed himself off as a count, who persuaded her to let him manage her. Giuseppe Papito Abadino was not only Baker's management, but her lover as well. The two could not marry due to Baker still being married to her second husband, Willie Baker. Under the management of Abadino, Baker's stage and public persona, as well as her singing voice, were transformed. In 1934, she took the lead in a revival of Jacques Offenbach's opera Le Creole, which premiered in December of that year for a six-month run at the Théâtre Marigny on the Champs-Élysées of Paris. In preparation for her performances, she went through months of training with a vocal coach. In the words of Shirley Bassey, who has cited Baker as her primary influence, she went from a petite danseuse sauvage with a decent voice to la grande diva magnifique. I swear in all my life I have never seen, and probably never shall see again, such a spectacular singer and performer. Despite her popularity in France, Baker never attained the equivalent reputation in America. Her star turn in a 1936 revival of Siegfeld Follies on Broadway generated less than impressive box office numbers, and later in the run, she was replaced by Gypsy Rose Lee. Time magazine referred to her as a Negro wench, whose dancing and singing might be topped anywhere outside of Paris, while other critics said her voice was too thin and dwarf-like to fill the Winter Garden Theater. She returned to Europe heartbroken. This contributed to Baker's becoming a legal citizen.
citizen of France and giving up her American citizenship, Baker returned to Paris in 1937, married the French industrialist Jean Lyon, and became a French citizen. They were married in the French town of Crevecker le Grand, in a wedding presided over by the mayor, Jamie Schmidt. Equals 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 work during World War II equals equals equals. In September 1939, when France declared war on Germany in response to the invasion of Poland, Baker was recruited by Deixima Bureau, French military intelligence, as an honorable correspondent. Baker collected what information she could about German troop locations from officials she met at parties. She specialized in gatherings at embassies and ministries, charming people as she had always done, while gathering information. Her cafe society fame enabled her to rub shoulders with those in the know, from high-ranking Japanese officials to Italian bureaucrats, and to report back what she heard. She attended parties and gathered information at the Italian embassy without raising suspicion. When the Germans invaded France, Baker left Paris and went to the Chateau des Milans, her home in the Dordogne department in the south of France. She housed friends who were eager to help the free French effort led by Charles de Gaulle and supplied them with visas. As an entertainer, Baker had an excuse for moving around Europe, visiting neutral nations such as Portugal, as well as some in South America. She carried information for transmission to England, about airfields, harbors, and German troop concentrations in the west of France. Notes were written in invisible ink on Baker's sheet music. Later in 1941, she and her entourage went to the French colony in North Africa. The stated reason was Baker's health, since she was recovering from another case of pneumonia, but the real reason was to continue helping the resistance. From a base in Morocco, she made tours of Spain. She pinned notes with the information she gathered inside her underwear, counting on her celebrity to avoid a strip search. She befriended the Pasha of Marrakech, whose support helped her through a miscarriage, the last of several. After the miscarriage, she developed an infection so severe it required a hysterectomy. The infection spread and she developed peritonitis and then septicemia. After her recovery, which she continued to fall in and out of, she started touring to entertain British, French, and American soldiers in North Africa. The Free French had no organized entertainment network for their troops, so Baker and her friends managed for the most part on their own. They allowed no civilians and charged no admission. In Cairo, Egypt's King Farouk asked her to sing. She refused because Egypt had not recognized Free France and remained neutral. However, she offered to sing in Cairo at a celebration of honor for the ties between Free France France and Egypt, and asked Farouk to preside, a subtle indication of which side his officially neutral country leaned toward. After the war, Baker received the Croix de Guerre and the Rosette de la Résistance. She was made a Chevalier of the Légion d'Honneur by General Charles de Gaulle. Baker's last marriage, to French composer and conductor Joe Bouillon, ended around the time Baker opted to adopt her eleventh child. After the separation, Baker's chateau in France was foreclosed and she had to be physically removed from the property. Equals 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 later career equals equals equals. In 1949, a reinvented Baker returned in triumph to the Folies Berger. Bolstered by recognition of her wartime heroics, Baker the performer assumed a new gravitas, unafraid to take on serious music or subject matter. The engagement was a rousing success, and re-established Baker as one of Paris' preeminent entertainers. In 1951 Baker was invited back to the United States for a nightclub engagement in Miami. After winning a public battle over desegregating the club's audience, Baker followed up her sold-out run at the club with a national tour. Rave reviews and enthusiastic audiences accompanied her everywhere, climaxed by a parade in front of 100,000 people in Harlem in honor of her new title, NAACP's Woman of the Year. Her future looked bright, with six months of bookings and promises of many more to come. An incident at the Stork Club interrupted and overturned her plans. Baker criticized the club's unwritten policy of discouraging black patrons, then scolded columnist Walter Winchell, an old ally, for not rising to her defense. Winchell responded swiftly with a series of harsh public rebukes, including accusations of communist sympathies, a serious charge at the time. The ensuing publicity resulted in the termination of Baker's work visa, forcing her to cancel all her engagements and return to France. It was almost a decade before U.S. officials allowed her back into the country. In January 1966, Fidel Castro invited Baker to perform at the Teatro Musical de la Habana in Havana, Cuba, at the seventh anniversary celebrations of his revolution. Her spectacular show in April broke attendance records. In 1968, Baker visited Yugoslavia and made appearances in Belgrade and in Skopje. In her later career, Baker faced financial troubles. She commented, Nobody wants me, they've forgotten me, but family members encouraged her to continue performing. In 1973 she performed at Carnegie Hall to a standing ovation. The following year, she appeared in a royal variety performance at the London Palladium, and then at the Monacan Red Cross Gala, celebrating her 50 years in French show business. Advancing years and exhaustion began to take their toll. She sometimes had trouble.
trouble remembering lyrics, and her speeches between songs tended to ramble, she still continued to captivate audiences of all ages. Equals equals civil rights activism equals equals. Although based in France, Baker supported the civil rights movement during the 1950s. When she arrived in New York with her husband Joe, they were refused reservations at 36 hotels because of racial discrimination. She was so upset by this treatment that she wrote articles about the segregation in the United States. She also began traveling into the South. She gave a talk at Fisk University, a historically black college in Nashville, Tennessee, on France, North Africa and the equality of the races in France. She refused to perform for segregated audiences in the United States, although she was offered $10,000 by a Miami club. The club eventually met her demands. Her insistence on mixed audiences helped to integrate live entertainment shows in Las Vegas, Nevada. After this incident, she began receiving threatening phone calls from people claiming to be from the Ku Klux Klan but said publicly that she was not afraid of them. In 1951, Baker made charges of racism against Sherman Billings' Les Stork Club in Manhattan, where she alleged she had been refused service. Actress Grace Kelly, who was at the club at the time, rushed over to Baker, took her by the arm and stormed out with her entire party, vowing never to return. Although she returned on 3 January 1956 with Prince Rainier of Monaco, the two women became close friends after the incident. When Baker was near bankruptcy, Kelly offered her a villa and financial assistance. Kelly by then was Princess Consort of Rainier III of Monaco. However, during his work on the Stork Club book, author and New York Times reporter Ralph Blumenthal was contacted by Jean-Claude Baker, one of Baker's sons. Having read a Blumenthal-written story about Leonard Bernstein's FBI file, he indicated that he had read his mother's FBI file and, using comparison of the file to the tapes, said he thought the Stork Club incident was overblown. Baker worked with the NAACP. Her reputation as a crusade grew to such an extent that the NAACP had Sunday May 20, 1951 declared Josephine Baker Day. She was presented with life membership with the NAACP by Nobel Peace Prize winner Drive, Ralph Bunch. The honor she was paid spurred her to further her crusading efforts with the Save Willie McGee rally after he was convicted of the 1948 beating death of a furniture shop owner in Trenton, New Jersey. As Baker became increasingly regarded as controversial, many blacks began to shun her, fearing that her reputation would hurt their cause. In 19 1963, she spoke at the March on Washington at the side of Rev. Martin Luther King, Jr. Baker was the only official female speaker. While wearing her free French uniform emblazoned with her medal of the Legion d'Honneur, she introduced the Negro women for civil rights. Rosa Parks and Daisy Bates were among those she acknowledged, and both gave brief speeches. After King's assassination, his widow Coretta Scott King approached Baker in the Netherlands to ask if she would take her husband's place as leader of the civil rights movement. After many days of thinking it over, Baker declined, saying her children were too young to lose their mother equals equals personal life equals 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 relationships equals 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 Baker was married four times her adopted son Jean-Claude Baker described his mother as bisexual having had relationships with men and women including the Mexican artist Frida Kahlo her first marriage was to American Pullman Porter Willie Wells when she was 13 years old the marriage was reportedly very unhappy and the couple divorced a short time later another short-lived marriage followed to Willie Baker in 19 21, she retained Baker's last name because her career began taking off during that time, and it was the name by which she became best known. In 1925 she began an extramarital relationship with the Belgian novelist Georges Simenon. In 1937, Baker married Frenchman Jean Lyon. She and Lyon separated in 1940. Lyon died in 1957 of Spanish influenza. She married French composer and conductor Joe Bouillon in 1947, but their union also ended in divorce. She was later involved for a time with the artist. Robert Brady, but they never married. Equals 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 children equals equals equals. During Baker's work with the civil rights movement, she began adopting children, forming a family she often referred to as the Rainbow Tribe. Baker wanted to prove that children of different ethnicities and religions could still be brothers. She often took the children with her cross country, and when they were at Chateau des Milans, she arranged tours so visitors could walk the grounds and see how natural and happy the children in the Rainbow Tribe were. For some time, Baker lived with her children and an enormous staff in the Chateau in Dordogne, France, with her fourth husband, Joe Bouillon. Equals equals later years and death equals equals. In her later years, Baker converted to Roman Catholicism. In 1968, Baker lost her castle due to unpaid debts. Afterwards Princess Grace offered her an apartment in Roquebrune, near Monaco. Baker was back on stage at the Olympia in Paris in 1968, in Belgrade in 1973, at Carnegie Hall in 1973, at the Royal Variety Performance at the London Palladium in 1970 and at the Gala du Cirque in Paris in 1974. On 8 April 
1975, Baker starred in a retrospective review at the Bobino in Paris, Josephine Bobino 1975, celebrating her 50 years in show business. The review, financed notably by Prince Rainier, Princess Grace, and Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, opened to rave reviews. Demand for seating was such that fold-out chairs had to be added to accommodate spectators. The opening night audience included Sophia Loren, Mick Jagger, Shirley Bassey, Deanna Ross, and Liza Minnelli. Four days later, Baker was found lying peacefully in her bed surrounded by newspapers with glowing reviews of her performance. She was in a coma after suffering a cerebral hemorrhage. She was taken to Pitié Salpêtrière Hospital, where she died, aged 68, on 12 April 1975. She received a full Roman Catholic funeral that was held at L'Église de la Madeleine. The only American-born woman to receive full French military honors at her funeral, Baker's funeral was the occasion of a huge procession. After a family service at St. Charles Church in Monte Carlo, Baker was interred at Monaco's Cimetière de Monaco. Equals equals legacy equals equals. Place Josephine Baker in the Montparnasse quarter of Paris was named in her honor. She has also been inducted into the St. Louis Walk of Fame, and on the 29th of March 1995, into the Hall of Famous Missourians. In 2015 she was inducted into the Legacy Walk. The Piscine Josephine Baker is a swimming pool along the banks of the Seine in Paris named for her. Writing in the online BBC magazine in late 2014, Darren Royston, historical dance teacher at Rod accredited Baker with being the Beyoncé of her day, and bringing the Charles into Britain. Two of Baker's sons, Jean-Claude and Jerry, Jari, grew up to go into business together, running the restaurant Chez Josephine on Theatre Row, 42nd Street, New York City. It celebrates Baker's life and works. Chateau des Milans, a castle near Sarlat in the Dordogne, was Baker's home where she raised her 12 children. It is open to the public and displays her stage outfits including her banana skirt, of which there are apparently several. It also displays many family photographs and documents as well as her Legion of Honor medal. Most rooms are open for the public to walk through including bedrooms with the cots where her children slept, a huge kitchen, and a dining room where she often entertained large groups. The bathrooms were designed in Art Deco style but most rooms retained the French Chateau style. Baker continued to influence celebrities more than a century after her birth. In a 2003 interview with USA Today, Angelina Jolie cited Baker as a model for the multiracial, multinational family she was beginning to create through adoption. Beyoncé performed Baker's banana dance at the Fashion Rocks concert at Radio City Music Hall in September 2006. On June 3, 2017, the 111th anniversary of her birth, Google released an animated Google Doodle, which consists of a slideshow chronicling her life and achievements. Equals equals portrayals equals equals. Baker appears in her role as a member of the French Resistance in Johannes Mario Simmel's 1960 novel, S. Mus Nick Dimmer Caviar Sign, C'est pas toujours du caviar. A character loosely based on Baker is featured in an episode of Hogan's Heroes titled Is General Hammerschlag Burning, which originally aired on 18 November 1967. The character, Kumasa, played by Barbara McNair, is a Chanteau's based in Paris. She later reveals herself to be Carol Dukes, a high school classmate of Sergeant James Kinchlow, Ivan Dixon, on whom she had a secret crush. The Italian-Belgian francophone singer-composer Salvatore Adamo pays tribute to Baker with the song Noël sur les Millens, album Petit Bonheur, Emmy 1970. Deanna Ross portrayed Baker in both her Tony Award-winning Broadway and television show An Evening with Deanna Ross. When the show was made into an NBC television special entitled The Big Event, An Evening with Deanna Ross, Ross again portrayed Baker. A German submariner mimics Baker's Don Spannon in the 1981 film Das Boot. In 1986, Helen Gelzer portrayed Baker on the London stage for a limited run in the musical Josephine, a musical version of the life and times of Josephine Baker with book, lyrics and music by Michael Wilde. The show was produced by Baker's longtime friend Jack Hockett in conjunction with Premier Box Office and the musical director was Paul McGuire. Gelzer also recorded a studio cast album titled Josephine. In 1991, Baker's life story, The Josephine Baker Story, was broadcast on HBO. Lynn Whitfield portrayed Baker, and won an Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Miniseries or a Special, becoming the first black actress to win the award in this category. Artist Hassan Musa depicted Baker in a 1994 series of paintings called Who Needs Bananas. In the 1997 animated film Anastasia, Baker appears with her cheetah during the musical number Paris Holds the Key, To Your Heart. In 2002, 
played by Corrine Plant added in Frida, a character based on Baker, topless, wearing the famous banana skirt, appears in the opening sequence of the 2003 animated film Les Triplets de Belleville. The 2004 erotic novel Scandalous by British author Angela Campion uses Baker as its heroine and is inspired by Baker's sexual exploits and later adventures in the French Resistance. In the novel, Baker, working with a fictional black Canadian lover named Drummer Thompson, foils a plot by French fascists in 1936 Paris. Her influence upon and assistance with the careers of husband and wife dancers Carmen de Lavalade and Jeffrey Holder are discussed and illustrated in rare footage in the 2005 Linda Atkinson, Nick Dube documentary, Carmen and Jeffrey. Beyoncé has portrayed Baker on various occasions. During the 2006 Fashion Rocks show, Knowles performed Deja Vu in a revised version of the dance Bannon costume. In Knowles's video for Naughty Girl, she is seen dancing in a huge champagne glass a la Baker. In I Am, Yours, an intimate performance at Win Las Vegas, Beyoncé lists Baker as an influence of a section of her live show. In 2006, J.E. Acute Rome Savary produced a musical, A La Recherche de Josephine, New Orleans Forever, Looking for Josephine. The story revolved around the history of jazz and Baker's career. In 2010, Carrie Hilson portrayed Baker in her single Pretty Girl Rock. In 2011, Sonia Rowland portrayed Baker in the film Midnight in Paris. Baker was heavily featured in the 2012 book Josephine's Incredible Shoe and the Black Pearls by Peggy Eve Anderson Randolph. In July 2012, Cheryl Howard opened in the sensational Josephine Baker, written and performed by Howard and directed by Ian Stryker at the Beckett Theatre of Theatre Row on 42nd Street in New York City, just a few doors away from Shea Josephine. In July 2013, Cush Jumbo's debut play Josephine and I premiered at the Bush Theatre, London It was reproduced in New York City at the Public Theatre's Joe's Pub from 27 February to 5 April 2015. In February 2017, Tiffany Daniels portrayed Baker in the Timeless television episode, The Lost Generation. In late February 2017 a new play about Baker's later years, The Last Night of Josephine Baker by playwright Vincent Victoria, opened in Houston, Texas, starring Erica Young. Equals equals film credits equals equals. Siren of the Tropics, 1927. The Woman from the Foley's Burgers, 1927. Short Subject, Zuzu, 1934. Princess of Tam Tam, 1935. Fosse Alert, 1940. Moulin Rouge, 1941, and Jedim Fingers N, 1954, Carosello del Varietta, 1955, equals equals see also equals equals, equals equals references equals equals, equals equals bibliography equals equals, equals equals external links equals equals, official website, Les Millens Josephine Baker's Castle in France, Josephine Baker at Al Musik, Josephine Baker at the Internet Broadway Database, Josephine Baker on Internet Movie Database, Self, Josephine Baker at Find a Grave, Josephine Baker on Internet Movie Database, Character, A La Recherche de Jose Fine, Official Josephine Baker Website, A Josephine Baker Photo Gallery, Discography at Sony BMG Masterworks, Archived from the Original on 27 September 2007, Photographs of Josephine Baker, The Electric Body, Nancy Cunard Sees Josephine Baker, 2003, Review Essay of Dance Style and Contemporary Critics, Guide to Josephine Baker Papers at Houghton Library, Harvard University, Josephine Baker Photographs, University of Missouri St. Louis.